My name's Alex and this year I decided to grow a vegetable garden. I started doing the odd bit of gardening about three years ago and I've realised it's one of the most rewarding feelings being able to harvest and cook with fresh food that you've grown yourself. And when I moved back in with my parents at the beginning of this year, I asked my dad if I could dig up part of his garden and plant some vegetables. Thankfully, he let me do so, and in January, I started making plans for this year's garden project. I've just spent the last three hours reading through my book and making notes on my computer of like the different species that I want to grow and the times of year which I need to sow the seeds and then harvest them. And it's quite overwhelming actually because there's like 25 different species of plant, vegetable that I want to grow. And each of those different species has a different life cycle. Some need it warmer than others, some can't tolerate frost so I have to plant them after uh, the last frost. Another thing I'm finding quite tricky is knowing the amount of each plant to grow. For example, how many onions do I need? How many potato plants? shall I grow? Anyway, I'm gonna need luck, so please wish me luck with this growing project. <coughs> I got a horrible cold and a cough. I'm feeling not too great, but today it's gonna to be the first day of working on the garden. We've got this space here, which my dad has allowed me to turn into vegetable patch, and we've got to prepare the land ready for gardening. Currently, there's a lot of plants there and we have got to dig up all those plants. There's bulbs, flowers, all sorts of other things growing in this patch. And we've got to dig them out before we can then plant like, fresh seeds and uh, my vegetables in. So today is gonna be a lot of digging. We've got a variety of tools. I don't know what it's called. I'm gonna call it a, a long spade. Post hole digger. Post hole digger apparently. Pickaxe, mattock, and then we've got a fork and a spade. So these are all your plants which yeah. have been growing here for how many years? Uh, it's about 15, 16 years. We're gonna dig them all out and put them on the grass and then go through them and work out what's worth keeping. Not only does it look like an onion, it also smells like an onion because it is actually related to the onions that we eat. It's a type of allium. I can sense this is gonna take way longer than I expected. There's so many bulbs and different plants in here. If we leave any in, then as soon as it gets a bit warmer, then I guess the whole is gonna start to grow up. And obviously they'll compete with the vegetables that I'm trying to grow, so We've got to try and get as much of this out as possible and it's going to take a while. A few hours later and I can confirm that digging is my least favourite thing to do with my time. After digging out all the larger plants, we then used a sieve to remove some of the small plants and bulbs. We could also take out any large stones in the soil. We've been working all evening. I would like to say it's weed free, but it's not. It's, there's gonna be a huge amount of seeds from plants that have been in here over the past many years. And I've already just found a few more. I think these are allium bulbs. So we might have some weed problems this year, but we will find that out when the spring comes. The next job was to spread a layer of fresh compost over the bed. Luckily, we have a compost bin at the bottom of the garden, which we've been putting kitchen waste in for the last few years. It all decomposed into a load of nice compost that would have probably cost me over £100 if I was to buy it from the shop. After the past few weeks of prepping the bed, it was now looking almost ready to plant in. However, the weather wasn't quite ready and it was still pretty cold. I was at a nursery this morning looking at trees and um, I came home with a brand new tree. This is a fig. The variety is brown turkey, which I've heard is suited to the colder climate here in England because figs come from warmer places and uh, they're, they're not native to here. But hopefully at some point we'll have some figs. It might be this year, it might be next year, it might be in many years, who knows. But I am a proud owner of a fig tree. 
It's gonna go on the patio for now. Although it was a little cold to start planting into the garden, I could start some plants off indoors. Today I'm gonna to be doing some chitting. Chitting is the process of starting potatoes off earlier on in the year by letting them sprout indoors before you put them outside. You're giving them a head start. I'm going to put some in uh, an egg box. These are ideal because you can place the potatoes in and they, they're like perfect holders for the potatoes. I went to a garden center the other day and found two varieties which I have heard are pretty good to grow. Firstly, we got some Maris Pipers. I love eating these. I buy these from the supermarket and they are great for roasting. I believe they're a flowery potato, uh, which means they're really good at soaking up oil and going crispy in, in the roasting tin. And I've also got these. These are Charlotte potatoes. It says here, the most popular potato in the UK. And here is the potato. I don't know if you can see, maybe. There's these little eyes, I think they, they call them eyes, where tiny little sprouts are starting to come out. If there's one there, one there, one there. That's where the potato will grow from. So that's where the leaves will then expand and, uh, and grow. I've grown potatoes once before in my life and it was an incredibly exciting and rewarding process digging up uh, loads of these at the end of the year. But the way you're apparently meant to do it is you choose a few of these eyes to keep and a few of them to rub off. If you let them all grow, you're kind of, the energy is being spread uh, across all of them. Whereas if you just choose one or two, then I think all the energy goes into those ones and they're strong and good. So I'm gonna rub off those ones and we simply just place the potato in there like an egg. And we do that with all of them. I've also heard that if you've got a potato which has multiple sprouts on, uh, you can you can chop them in half. Let's try this. Smells lovely. You let these heal over and then we can grow a potato plant from this bit and a potato plant from that bit. So we can actually grow twice as many potatoes. Gosh, we've got so many. Keep my label on it so I know what ones these are. And we'll do the same with these Maris Pipers. These Maris Pipers have sprouted a little bit more than the Charlottes. That's not a very nice looking one, that's covered in mold. But we'll check in with them in a few weeks and see how they're getting on. I realized I wouldn't have space in the prepared bed for all these potatoes. But after getting permission from my dad, I dug another bed around a birch tree which would become the potato patch. The weather outside still isn't warm and we can get frosts here in this part of the country until I think middle of May. And the sowings I'm going to do today consist of lettuce, chard, salad onions, parsley, coriander and dill. All these plants can cope with cold weather. They're what gardeners call hardy plants, which means they can stand the, the cold weather that we might get. So I'm going to sow the seeds in these little pots, grow them indoors until they are sort of filling out these little module trays, and then I'll plant them in the garden, where hopefully they will survive even if it goes below zero. The process was pretty simple. Fill a module tray with compost, use a pen to create little holes, and pop some seeds in. For germination, seeds need to be moist, so I sprayed the compost thoroughly with water and stuck a label in so I wouldn't forget what I had sowed. Over the next week, things started to germinate. Radish was the quickest, taking only three days to sprout. Chard took six days, salad onions and coriander 11 days, parsley and dill were taking slightly longer, but after a couple of weeks I had loads of growing plants. It's the 13th of March and my seedlings that I sowed about two weeks ago have started popping up. The only thing that seems to be just not doing anything is lettuce. I don't know whether my seeds were dodgy or I did something wrong. I might have to sow some more of those. Or maybe they're just taking their time. Anyway, today we're gonna start off the process of hardening off. Now I've never done this before, but apparently when you start seeds inside, and you want to transfer them into your garden, which is outside, you should harden them off. You should get them ready for the colder environment. So we've got to get these little babies ready for the real world. Yeah, because it's not going to be nice and, nice and warm under a grow light inside your whole life. This is possibly what I'm most excited about. These are salad onions. The variety is white Lisbon. These are multi-sown 
I've seen gardeners do this. They sow like 10 seeds in one cell, plant them together, and then you pick them as a clump. I don't know if it'll work, but we'll give it a go. One of the problems my plants will face when they are planted out in the garden will be slugs. These are by far the most annoying pest I've had to deal with over my short time as a gardener. I would absolutely love a couple of runner ducks to sort out the slugs. However, my dad didn't want ducks in his garden. So I turned to another species which eats slugs called nematodes. These are tiny worms that you can introduce into the soil in a powdered form, which will feed on slugs and hopefully reduce the numbers enough to not cause too much of a problem. But as you will see later on in this video, it didn't stop the slugs completely. A couple of weeks later and the weather was looking slightly better and I wanted to get my onions in the ground. However, since the temperatures had risen, the weeds had also been growing and there were thousands of seedlings popping up. There's potatoes growing in here. This is a hoe. It's a weed killing machine. I cut the weeds off and hope they don't grow back. Just cutting off the tops of the weeds worked, but I could see me having to do the same thing in a few days time when more seeds germinated, so I opted for a more expensive method of putting down another layer of compost to block out the light so that the weeds wouldn't be able to grow. This would also add another load of fertility to the soil and help long term, so I saw it as a good investment. I could then start planting my onions, which I simply pushed into little holes so that the tips were just under the soil. I also got distracted whilst at the garden centre and bought some sweet peas and strawberry plants. Three for one offer. I managed to plant my radishes in the ground too. It's coming together, we got onions in today, 100 of them. I didn't realise that the onions would take up like a quarter of the garden alone. Anyway, that's not a problem. I really like onions and you need them when you cook pretty much everything. I got strawberries in and also some sweet peas. And over the next few weeks, as it gets warmer and warmer, there'll be more and more stuff to sow in the soil. And I'm excited. See you soon. My main aim of this garden project this year is to grow some food and have some fun. However, I can't help try and understand a little bit more about the science that's going on underneath the soil and learn a bit about how plants actually grow. I realized that you could send off a sample of your soil in your garden to the lab and get it tested so you can see what is in your soil. Because when you look at soil, you can't really see if it's any good or not. You can see the structure and the, the texture of it, but you can't see the actual nutrients that are available to the plants in there. You can't see those things. So you send it to a lab. I paid 40 quid, which you could say maybe isn't worth it. Soil analysis results for the veg patch. This is so cool. This is the most scientific thing I've ever done. And I didn't even do it, someone else did. Soil texture, sandy silt loam. Loam soils are considered the most suitable for gardening. Woo, we got loam soils. Organic matter content, 8.8%, which is apparently high. That is also good because organic matter is what feeds the soil. Fungi, microbes and other things eat the organic matter and turn it into the nutrients which plants can use up. Vegetables require a pH of about 6.5 for optimum growth. Your soil pH was measured at 6.7. This is reasonable for growth of vegetables and no lime would be required. Lime would make the soil more alkaline if it was too acidic but apparently we're all good. You're probably getting really bored of all the scientific stuff, so I'm going to skip over this. Basically, the report told me that my soil is good enough for vegetables to grow. I was dreading having this report back and it just saying, your soil is terrible, your plants are going to die. There's no way out of this. You should just give up now. But no, it was rather positive. We should expect some vegetable crops this year. As the weather improved through March and April, I continued to sow more seeds, some indoors and some like carrots and parsnips straight into the garden. I've heard it's good to do this with vegetables with a long taproot to avoid the roots getting damaged when transplanting. I also checked up on the potatoes that I had put on the windowsill, which were now ready to put in my round potato bed. 
Quite a lot of people asked me in one of my other gardening videos, why are you growing cheap crops that you can buy from a supermarket uh, for hardly any money at all? Well, the reason is because I'm not really doing this gardening for, for saving money. I'm doing it to grow my own food and have some fun. And I decided this year to, to grow crops which I enjoy eating and crops which I eat quite a lot. And potatoes are one of them. Now for the Maris Piper potatoes. My favorite type of potato is a roast potato. There's many ways to use potatoes. They're very versatile in the kitchen and that's why I'm gonna be growing them. I sowed these pea seeds into an egg container, which did work, but you can't pick up the egg container because it's falling apart. So you have to put it on a tray. It's so daunting seeing a whole empty bed at the beginning of the season but as it slowly fills up I feel more and more content and comfortable with how this year is going to turn out. It looks like we should have some food to eat this year. Of course there's many things that can go wrong along the way. I've got a few pots here with seedlings. I sowed the seeds maybe two three weeks ago. I've got some chamomile, borage and red and white campion which I think I've heard are all flowers which bees quite like. So I thought I'd create a little flower patch here, just behind the pond. And then the bees can come from the hives over there, feed on the flowers, drink some water, and we're gonna create a little bee area in the garden. I didn't realize how quickly the garden would fill up with plants. And stupidly, a few weeks ago, I ordered uh, more strawberry plants. If I had known they wouldn't go in the bed, then I probably wouldn't have got them, but I've got, I think, uh, 20 or 30. It's just these, I think they call them plugs. They're just the root balls of the strawberry plants. And I'm going to pop them on into uh, some containers. I put on my bee suit because there was one angry bee that kept on chasing me. So my plan is to use this as the base and then stack the pots up like that. And there is my finished strawberry tower. Hopefully in a few months, we'll have some strawberries. On the 22nd of April, I had my first harvest from the garden. Only 38 days after sowing the seeds, these radishes were ready to pick. That's incredibly quick. My spring onions are still looking like they're gonna take ages. My sweet peas haven't grown at all. Onions are growing, but still there's a long time until we harvest them, but radishes, Wow, I can't believe how quick they are to the crop. Not bad for the first crop of garden food. Now, if I had done some pre-planning, I would have sowed some more radish seeds that were ready to go in the place of these ones. But I'm not very good at thinking ahead. So there's some bare ground now. I'm probably going to sow some more radishes or actually maybe some more spring onions because I eat an awful lot of spring onions and they will be very beneficial to have once these ones are eaten. Oh, I'm happy about that. Radishes are tasty. They're slightly peppery, spicy. That was really juicy. Nice radish harvest. I also started picking leaves from the chard that were perfect for mixing into my lunchtime pasta. Lots of the seeds that I sowed about a month ago are now looking really good. Look at this, we've got corn. I love sweet corn, especially when it's barbecued. So I'm really excited about those. And then we've got a couple of different varieties of cherry tomatoes. This spring's weather has been pretty dreadful, but I think the next week it's starting to get a bit better. So I've decided to start hardening these off. Then I'll probably bring them in at night for the next week so they can get used to the used to the weather. Whilst these plants have been loving life in the indoors and under the nice grow light, my plants outdoors don't look so happy, especially my fig tree that I bought. I could see that it was starting to grow. There were these little figs appearing and then we had a frost 
and they all kind of went black and died. So I am unsure whether we're going to get any figs this year. There is actually a leaf starting to appear. Anyway, this, this fig tree is a long-term project. This fig tree is going to come with me wherever I go, so I can, uh, I can show you the, the journey of Mr. Fig Tree, the brown turkey. I soon started seeing damage to my pea plants and it was clear that the slugs and snails had been munching on them. Where are you silly little slugs? There's one. Some plants they've really destroyed. There's another slug there. There's none of these great big slugs. That one was hiding under the leaf. Caught in the act. You stupid little Snail, eating my watermelons. Get off there. Now what do I do? I don't want it to die. I'm gonna go for the, the ultimate lob. Ready to go on the ride of your life. Whew. You can see the damage that it's done. Eating away at the leaf. And the more they eat, the less it can photosynthesize. Means the less it grows. All right, I'm gonna go to bed. Stupid snails. I'm doing something called earthing up, where you put earth on top of the potatoes when they grow. Which apparently some people say that the you get more potatoes because you create a longer stem where more potatoes can form along. Uh, other people say you don't need to do it. I don't know. I'm trying it out. It's fun. This is the crop which I am most excited to plant this year because sweet corn is my favorite food ever, I think, especially when it's barbecued. 15, 16, 17. I've got 17 corn plants. These ones are outgrowing their containers that they're in currently, but they seem to have done really well. But I think they're ready to go out. There's some yellowing of the leaves and I think they're probably running out of food. So we're gonna put them in the ground you can see all the roots curling up at the end. Corn plants, I believe, are uh, pollinated by wind. So the wind blows the pollen from the male flower onto the female flower, and then the fruit can develop. And I heard it's very important to plant a few of them together to help with this uh, pollination. Another exciting crop, tomatoes. The reason I'm planting all this stuff today is because it's now uh, middle of May and we shouldn't get any more frost. And plants like corn and tomatoes, I've heard can't withstand frost. So these can now go in the ground. Look at the garden, it is full of plants. There is actually no more space to plant anything else. I've already been getting some crops from the charred lettuce and coriander. Soon we'll be able to get the spring onion and then the carrots and strawberries and parsley. And by the middle of the summer, this whole bed should look really full because uh, obviously the plants that I put in are only seedlings. Uh, so currently it looks like there's lots of space, but actually once they all grow, it's going to all be taken up. There was no time to relax though, as the weeds were incredibly quick to grow. A bucket full of weeds. I've just been to the garden center to pick up some more compost. I've realized with gardening, compost is the most expensive thing. I had loads of my own that we've been making in the compost heap down at the bottom of the garden over the past few years, but still I've had to buy in a lot more. And uh, it's kind of scary how expensive this is, but it kind of makes me think in the future, making as much as I can is definitely a worthwhile investment of time. I'm going to be doing some container plants for the greenhouse and I'm going to be growing some rather odd looking fruit. This is a choyote. I'm going to put this in here. Cucumber. You can see that it needs a new home because it's 
beautiful up with roots. And the last thing I'm going to plant today is this watermelon. I would have had two plants, but the slugs ate this one last night, which I'm very annoyed about. These slugs are causing me such a pain. It's fun putting little seedlings into bigger pots because it's like you're giving them a new home. You just know that they're going to have so much more food and so much more space to grow really big and strong. Last year, I sowed my cucumbers so early, I was harvesting them in late April, early May, which is crazy because this year it's already mid-May and this is what my watermelons look like. I can't forget to give it a water. This is especially important for greenhouse plants because it doesn't rain in here. All the water will be water that I've given them. So that's the garden planted up and the greenhouse pots planted up. I've still got a few cucumbers to uh, put into bigger pots in the greenhouse and also some more, more melons. But the garden is pretty much there now. I, I just need to wait and be patient and see if any of this stuff actually grows. And I'm excited to see the results. Already there's been some crops which have just failed completely, like my celeriac and celery. Both of those, I couldn't even grow on past seedlings. I'm not sure why, they just didn't seem to want to grow. Other things like the onions are looking really good and the chard, corn and tomatoes are also looking promising. And over the next few months, we're gonna find out how much harvest we can actually get from this little garden here. I've just been prepping dinner tonight, so I did some harvesting, got loads of chard. I've got enough chard to to, to live off right now. I actually did a blood test the other day and my doctor said that I have very healthy blood. I told him it was probably because I eat lots of nice fresh uh, chard from my garden. Look at that. And look at all of that. Let me show you what's going on in the garden because currently things are growing pretty fast. First, as you walk down the path, we got some peas. I got my sugar snaps here, growing up this hazel, and then sweet peas, growing up some bamboo sticks. These got off to a really slow start because the slugs have been an absolute pain. And even the plants which I recently replaced because they got completely eaten by slugs, uh, they are also being attacked by slugs and snails. So they're slow to grow as well. It seems like when they get going though and they start creating all their big leaves and growth, they really withstand the slug damage. The slugs can eat away at the bottom leaves, but they just can't keep up with the quick growth of, of the, the rest of the plant. I was hoping to get all this hazel covered in sugar snap peas, but it looks like we might have to accept that half of it is going to be quite slow and uh, maybe not even produce any peas at all. But further along, I have my main coriander section of the garden. Now, I decided to grow quite a lot of coriander because I eat it a lot and I really enjoy it. I know some people will hate it. Lots of people find it tastes of soap. I, on the other hand, love it. So I thought, I'm gonna grow loads. And I realized that I overplanted this massively. I've got enough coriander to feed like five families. I only really needed like one or two plants for myself and my family, but it's not too bad. I don't need to worry about running out of coriander anytime soon. Next to my coriander, I've got my main row of chard. I think there must be about eight chard plants there. Now I didn't really grow chard because I love eating it. I grew it more because I enjoy the colors that you get. This is rainbow chard. I've got some yellow stemmed plants, some red stemmed, and also some green stemmed. One problem I've been having with the chard is a animal called a leaf miner. Can you see the leaf here? It doesn't look too happy, it looks like it's dying. Well, I learned the other day that that is because of leaf miners, a little insect. Now, I managed to find the eggs of the leaf miner. I think they're the eggs. They're on the back of this leaf here. You might not be able to see, there's the tiny little white patches and those will hatch into leaf miners and then eat the leaves like that. I've heard that a way to avoid leaf miners is to put something over so that the, the animal can't get in in the first place and lay the eggs. I'm probably not going to bother at this stage because we have plenty of leaves which are free of the leaf miner and the ones that are affected aren't too bad. And I'll eat these anyway, I don't think they're gonna 
hurt me. The way I've been harvesting these crops, such as coriander, chard, lettuce, and parsley, is by taking off the outside leaves. The way these plants seem to grow is they come with a new stem from the inside. Um, so if you take off the outside leaves, the older leaves, that then allows more light to get into the inside leaves so then they grow quicker. And every day this spring I've been able to uh, put some of this into my food that I've been cooking. Lettuce this year has been terrible. I'm still unsure whether I had some dodgy seeds or that well, I just didn't know what I was doing. I did plant the seeds on top of the soil rather than under because they need light to germinate. But still I only got like four plants out of the 30 that I sowed. But these ones are doing okay now. There's enough to pick a few leaves every other day for a salad. I definitely want to try growing more lettuce in the future. I think next season I'm going to try growing a variety of different types uh, because every meal you want to have some salad with and lettuce is perfect for that. I've then got seven tomato plants. These are all cherry tomato varieties. So they're smaller tomatoes and they're also sweeter. And then in between them, I've planted something which I see lots of people use between tomatoes and they are marigolds. They haven't come up that much yet, but I've heard that they are good to plant with tomatoes because they uh, draw pests to them rather than to the tomatoes. So I'm really looking forward for the next few months where these tomato plants should grow up here. I'm going to have to stake them up, then tie them with string to the uh, stick that I use. And then when these flowers come up, that should also be an, a nice sight. And then right on the corner here is another thing which I use pretty much every day. I always cut a few stems of this off. This is parsley. This parsley is honestly the best tasting parsley I've ever eaten. When you cut it off, the, the smell just gets to you so quick. And I chop this up, put it in with pasta, put it on pretty much anything actually. Parsley was a lot slower to get going than the coriander. Coriander was so quick and it's looking like it might even go to flower soon. But this parsley is a bit slower, uh, but there's definitely well enough to pick every single day. Oh, and I've got a nasturtium plant, planted that back in like March and that's doing really well. Put up its first flower, so it's looking really nice. And the leaves of nasturtium actually taste really interesting. They're sort of peppery. Now these strawberries here started to flower about a month ago and they are already, oh, there's one turning red here. So they're ripening. There's actually quite a few, maybe not enough for a, a large strawberry milkshake, but certainly enough to munch on. I've got another 20 strawberry plants that I planted in containers that are on the patio and those are also starting to flower as well. So it's looking like we will have strawberries to eat this year and quite a few of them. Behind the strawberries, we have the root vegetable patch. I've got three rows, which I'm quite happy with my, my straight lines. Three rows of carrots. There's three different varieties as well because I wanted to try a few different types, see what's, see what's good, see what works well. And then behind, I've got some parsnips as well. These carrots and parsnips seem to take a while. It took maybe two weeks for the seeds to germinate and now uh, I guess we'll have to wait quite a while for the roots to develop. But I went through these rows and picked out lots of the seeds because I sowed loads of seeds. You don't want them to be too cramped together. So when they germinated, I pricked out uh, a number of them to give them a bit more space. I think I might need to do that again because like this one. Yeah, look, I just pulled out one of them and you can see the, the little carrot there. Oh, and it smells like carrot. And it tastes like carrot. Let's go look at the flower patch. The borage is actually just about to flower. It's sending up its flower stem. I don't know how tall they get, but you can see the little purpley blue flower buds that were gonna open soon. I definitely didn't uh, space these correctly. Uh, I put them way too close together and too close to the other flowers. So the chamomile is no longer getting any light, which is a little bit of a problem. But other than that, these things are growing well. And then we have 100 onions. Uh, I think I went a little bit over the top with these because these are taking up pretty much uh, half the garden. They seem to be growing well. They shot up really quick from the little uh, sets that I planted. Those are the little bulbs that you start them with. They instantly grew this sort of 50, 60 centimeter stem. And now they seem to have stopped growing upwards and hopefully they'll be putting all their energy into the bulbs. And I think over the next month or two, the bulbs should expand into full-sized onions. 
And then I realized that in between the rows that I sowed of these onions, there's quite a lot of space. So I've put in some spring onion seedlings between a couple of these rows. And then behind all this onion madness are my corn plants, which are also growing quite quick now. They take a little bit of time to get going. I think they really like warm weather and the last week has been super warm and they're growing fast now. They should get quite high. I think maybe over head height, which will be, which will add some nice uh, height to the garden because currently it's all very low. I'll show you the potatoes. They're down the bottom of the garden. The potato ring. They seem to be coming on quite well, relatively maintenance free. I've just had to water them occasionally, but this ground here seems to hold the water really well. And they've been growing so fast since the weather got warm. This is another crop that we have to wait a little bit longer for before we see the results. And here are all my bees. I've got, uh, I think, six beehives now. It went from two to six in just uh, a few months. <laughs> but the bees are doing well. There has been some problems and some things that have uh, caught me off guard and I've had to sort out like one of my queens dying, which was kind of sad. But we've got most of the problems fixed and uh, they're creating some honey for us. Down the path here in the greenhouse, my dad did have his orchid collection, but now I've taken it over with my cucurbit collection. I've got some watermelons, some normal lemons, a choyote plant, which is this funky looking spiky thing there. Ow! Then I planted one cucumber plant this spring. I had one seed left from last year, and that is what is doing best. I've decided to try and train it up a piece of string to the ceiling because they're sort of vining plants, and it's already starting to produce some flowers. So we should have some cucumbers pretty soon. So that is how the garden is looking right now. I'm going to get on with my morning chores and water the garden. It hasn't rained in the last week, so I've had to actually do quite a bit of watering. I also need to do some weeding because the weeds are popping up so quick. Uh, but I also think I'm going to do some harvesting of all the leaves. Ah, it's coming together. In the spring I was so worried that I just didn't know what I was doing and I didn't think I could fill up this whole space. It looked so big and daunting. But now I wish I had more space. I nearly forgot to show you my fig tree. I'm so happy this thing is growing. It didn't die. And what I'm even more happy about is that we have a fig that is growing. It's expanding in size every day and the leaves look beautiful and green and luscious. And we're gonna have one fig to eat this year, hopefully. That's gonna be a, a very exciting day. That's a whole bunch of coriander already picked. That's more than you'd get in one of those packets, but it did take me the last few months to grow so I guess that's the price you have to pay quite a lot of time and patience. <laughs> Seventy-five grams of coriander. There's my charred bunch, hundred and forty grams, lettuce, seventy grams. And then we only took a small amount of parsley because I'm only going to use that for putting on top of pasta dishes. It feels like things are just growing so, so quickly. It was only a few days ago when I last showed you around the garden and there's already new stuff happening. This cucumber plant is very quickly climbing up this string and has actually got two flowers. Cucumbers are so cool to watch grow because just behind the flowers you can see the cucumber, the little cucumber already there. And once that flower has been pollinated, the fruit can then develop into a, a full-sized cucumber. However, that's not entirely true because cucumbers, as well as lots of other plants, I think, humans have cultivated these species so that they don't actually need pollination, which is kind of mad. I don't really understand how that works, but uh, this variety doesn't actually produce male flowers. It just produces the female ones. So that flower will soon disappear and the fruit behind will swell up and get nice and big. And there's actually one, two, three, four, five, there's like about six or seven uh, baby cucumbers that will grow on there. Oh no, there's more up here. There's 12, 13. I've heard some people say that you can cut off the early fruit to uh, put more energy into the leaf growth before uh, and then leave it to fruit later. I'm gonna leave those because I really want to eat a cucumber soon. I was sitting in the garden the other day sort of admiring uh, how nice it all looked now. <laughs> Feeling quite proud of myself that I've created a garden that 
has already supplied quite a few uh, things to eat this year. When my dad said to me, you know you could be growing way more food very simply and easily. And he told me about how you've got long-term crops, like things which take all season to develop, like onions and sweet corn. And you've got short-term crops, things like radish, for example, which only take 30, or well, mine took 38 days from seed to a harvest. And what you can do is in between the the rows of long-term crops, you can sow short-term crops and get like a double harvest. So I went to the supermarket and got some more radish seeds. These, these are called French Breakfast 3. That's the variety name. Um, why breakfast? I don't know what that means. If, they're gonna, if they look anything like that, I'm gonna be really happy. They're so long and the colors, the gradient from red to white looks so cool. I'm going to sow some radish seeds in between the onions because the onions won't be ready for months. These will be ready in just over a month. Oh, and I've just noticed the strawberries that I showed you just the other day, the ones that were starting to develop and ripen, are actually almost fully red now. So they're gonna be ready to pick. We haven't had rain for the past like, two weeks, so I need to make sure I water the whole garden again. I'll do that after I've sowed the seeds. I'm gonna make a, a shallow little line in the soil. I'm realizing more and more how if you want to garden effectively and harvest the most amount of food possible from the ground that you have, you need to be reasonably good at uh, planning and keeping track of all the things that are growing and at what times you need to sow more because at some point, some of those crops are going to be ready to harvest. And if I don't have anything ready to go into their place when I take them out, then there's gonna be just ground which is not being used, which is kind of uh, sad to see because you want there to be always something growing in that soil. It's what nature does. Uh, nature never has just a, a bare patch of soil. When one thing dies or one thing finishes growing, there's always another thing to take its place. So I've been trying to do that this year. <laughs> Uh, trying because I am not too great at planning and being organized uh, but I've been making notes of when I sow things and when I harvest them and seeing how long it takes to go from sowing something to harvesting something because if you know that a crop takes roughly 60 days to harvest you know that a few weeks before you get to the end of those 60 days, you can start sowing more, ready to plant out some more stuff. Now I've left this a little bit late, but my spring onions, I can see, are gonna be ready to harvest soon. And I want to put some lettuce in their place. I'm speechless. I just walked into the garden with a massive smile on my face because I was about to pick my first strawberries of the year. They were getting big and juicy and red. They were actually ready to pick today. The day that they ripen perfectly is the day that they get eaten by something. I'm pretty sure that's a bird. We have loads of birds in this garden and that is almost certainly one of the birds. I reckon it was one of those. It was you, wasn't it? Both of the ripe ones were taken and even the one which is currently getting ripe has also been eaten. I am mad. I need to put a netting on these strawberries because I can just see that happening more and more, especially if they've already had a taste of it. They're gonna be back when the other ones ripen, so I'm going to find a netting to put over them. Well, hopefully that is the last of my strawberries getting eaten by birds. Well, hey, it's about four months since I sowed my spring onions, but they are ready to pick. And because I sowed them with about five to 10 seeds in each module tray, I can harvest them as a clump, ready to take them to the kitchen. I've been trying to weigh everything so I can keep track of how much I'm growing, but I find it hard, especially with all the leafy plants, because I do so many different harvests. Like every day I'm picking them and I often can't be bothered to weigh everything. But one clump of spring onions is about 100 grams. So 100 grams for one clump, 
got like 10 clumps out there. Probably like a kilogram currently. But the ones I leave in the ground will keep on growing. They should swell up a little bit more. So as you can see, these are quite small still. But so tasty. The green bit is very mild. In fact, they might store better if I put them in water. I guess they'll probably keep growing actually. And I can just use them as and when I need them. Nice, another harvest from the garden. It's going good, it's going very good. You want some food, Daisy? I'll get you some lettuce. It's so hot. I've actually been away from home for the last five days. Luckily, my dad was able to water everything because it's been so dry and so warm. Uh, everything would have died if it didn't have any water. But I returned home after my time away to see that everything has grown crazy amounts. When you're looking at your garden every day, it seems like it's not growing. It's like when you watch the clock at school. Time seems to go so slowly. But if you go away for some days and come back, you see the massive change that's happened. And the garden is looking pretty overgrown right now. And there's quite a lot of jobs that I need to get on with. Firstly, we've got peas that need harvesting. This plant has been flowering for the past two weeks and we've finally got some pea pods. These are sugar snap peas, but there are loads more flowers appearing and each of those flowers will turn into another pea pod. My coriander plants have shot up and started flowering. And although I could keep eating the leaves, the plants are producing a lot less leaves and put all their energy into the flowers. And the leaves are really thin and um, not like your normal coriander leaves that you've seen before. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to clear all these coriander out as well as this uh, chard as well, because the chard is also starting to flower. I don't know whether to pull the roots up or to just cut it off. I think I might keep maybe one plant or two plants for the seeds. For every plant, their aim is to grow lots of leaves and then to flower, because when they flower, they can produce seeds and then create more plants which is good for the plant, but for a gardener, you, you want them to put energy into the thing which you want to eat. And in this case, we don't want to eat the flowers uh, or the seeds really, I want to have the, the foliage. So they are not much use to me now. But all of this can go on the compost, which is good. But I'm really happy with how the coriander has gone this year. I haven't had to buy any coriander for most of the year, which is amazing because I use it almost every day to put on something or other. I can put all of that on the compost. A couple of different varieties of lettuce. This is what a baby lettuce looks like. Now unlike the coriander and chard, we actually want the flowers on these tomatoes. The flowers are where we get the tomatoes from. And I'm currently seeing the first few flowers appearing on each plant. But what I'm gonna do with these tomatoes is cut off the lower leaves. Apparently you want good airflow with tomatoes. And so cutting off the lower leaves, it doesn't harm the plant. The plant doesn't need those ones. Uh, it uses these new fresher leaves. Uh, so we can cut them off and also Tomato plants produce these side shoots. Now these side shoots will eventually uh, make the plant bushy. But with these, I want them to grow tall um, and put all that energy into one stem and the fruits along that one stem. So I'm going to remove all these side shoots. Let's do some trimming. Looks a lot neater and tidier. Bamboo. The tomatoes that I'm growing are an indeterminate variety, which means that they can grow up quite tall and will need some support. I pushed in some bamboo posts and throughout the season, I would tie the stems to the support to keep the plant upright. The bird netting that we put up has done its job and we've got some ripe strawberries. They look amazing. And yesterday evening, I actually tried and tasted my first strawberries of this year. There's a couple there, look at that one. That is beautiful. That was amazing. These ones are ready to harvest as well. Look at that. Apart from something has actually eaten away there. Plant is still flowering, so we should have plenty more strawberries coming 
soon. But I've also noticed this plant on the left has sent out a really long stem where it's trying to make a new plant. I think they're called runners and it's a way that plants can divide. They can send out another shoot and then start rooting elsewhere. But I don't want them to do that because it's going into the carrots. So I'm gonna cut that off. So that was joined to the main plant and then it sent out this really long stem. And then from here, I guess it would root down and then create its own plant. My borage has gone crazy. I definitely planted too many in the small space because it has now shaded out pretty much everything else in the area. But we've got loads of these flowers. Now these blue flowers are completely edible. People say they taste like cucumber. I planted borage because I had heard that honeybees really like it. And they definitely do because I can see plenty of my bees feeding on these flowers. Carrots and parsnips are coming along nicely. Onions are actually swelling, so I can see the bulb is actually getting larger and larger. And it seems like my corn plants are also enjoying the hot weather a lot, because they've also shot up. Everything's watered, so that's all good. And this cucumber plant is just incredible. I love how they grow, and these huge leaves, look. It's like a jungle in here. When all of these plants, when these melons and cucumbers get right to the ceiling, and there's fruit hanging down, it's gonna look so cool. Anyway, I've got the first cucumber to harvest. This is a small cucumber variety. I'm gonna put this in the fridge because I prefer cucumbers when they're cold, actually. When they're warm, I'm not so keen on them. Cucumber number one of 22. <coughs> Let's hope there's many more to come this year. That's a cucumber leaf. It's massive. It's the 11th of June and I've just done a harvest from the garden. We've got some big juicy spring onions, lettuce, parsley, nasturtium leaves and flowers. Gosh, oh, I forgot to pick the peas. Cucumbers from the garden, salad from the garden, peas from the garden, chilies from chilies. the supermarket. <laughs> Lettuce from the garden, spring onions from the garden, bacon and uh, burgers. I've got to work on my meat production. I haven't really got room for a cow or a pig. Everything's growing. I think my favorite part of having a vegetable garden is being able to share food that I've grown with friends and family. It was really hot during the middle of June, so I went into my friend Harry's workplace with one of my cucumbers. Oh, cucumber. <laughs> didn't we have cucumber today, Anna? Yeah, we did. We love cucumbers. Today. <laughs> <laughs> Good, we'll be fair. Want a bit of cucumber? Oh, my cucumber. Oh, look at it. That's a great cucumber. No, it's all yours, mate. Thank you, mate. Is it homegrown? Yeah, yeah, I grew it. That's delicious. I, I think one of my favourite hobbies is. It's the 17th of June and I'm standing in the garden surrounded by so much growth. My corn plants are producing the flowers. My onion bulbs are expanding rapidly. I've had a consistent supply of spring onions. I just pulled up this white radish. It's so odd, I didn't plant any of these. But there was just one growing in between the uh, parsnips and carrots down here. So strange, how did you get here? I can't believe how prolific these lettuces are. So I've picked all the outside leaves, and I do this maybe once a week, and I've harvested a whole box. Oh, this isn't really a box, is it? It's a tray. A um, it's actually an old mushroom container, but we've got all that lettuce, which is probably enough for the next like five days. Over the coming days, I harvested way more parsley than I was ever going to use myself, so I decided to try and sell some in an honesty box outside the house. First thing for sale in my honesty box. Parsley bunches. I'm actually super happy with this parsley. It grew so well and it smells amazing and it tastes amazing and it has just grown crazy in the garden. I've got three bunches in here. I've got more in the house. What do you reckon? Two pounder? Two pounder bunch? 
I mean, it is a pr it is better quality parsley than you'll get anywhere else. Let's be honest. For sale, Alex's farm shop has opened. The last few evenings, I've been seeing a deer in that field over there. Normally, the deer are really scaredy and they don't come out. Um, I'm pretty sure it is a she because it's got a big belly and apparently roe deer give birth in May or June and it's currently middle of June so I think it's probably pregnant. Look at it, on this camera it's like a dot. But on this camera it's a deer. I sowed some of these radish seeds in between the onions uh, about three weeks ago and I was making sure to keep them nice and moist so they germinate because you know, it was really hot weather. Anyway, they didn't pop up, so I thought, what's going on here? So I put some inside in, in the house, in some module trays, to keep an eye on them and see, see if the seeds would, would germinate in there. But nothing happened again. And then I looked closer at these seeds, and I realised they all look like they've got loads of fungus growing on them. They're all covered in a layer of green, horrible-looking mould. And these were straight, I, just, I bought them and they were sealed up. So I think that explains why these seeds did nothing. And interestingly, it wasn't just my radish seeds which did this. I had some lettuce seeds in the spring that I sowed and they just took for ages to germinate. And then when they did, they weren't exactly that strong plants. So I bought another packet of the same variety of seeds, sowed them and then they germinated instantly and worked perfectly fine. So it goes to show that it's not always down to uh, your bad gardening skills if your seeds don't grow. Uh, sometimes the actual seeds are dodgy. But if I had looked closer from the start, I could have predicted that would happen because these ones are covered in mold. The highlight of midsummer was the colorful display of sweet peas. My mum really likes them, so has been picking bunches of flowers every day for over three weeks now. I decided to also add bunches of sweet peas to my honesty box. Well, I'm slowly learning a little bit more about retail and um, you've got to set your prices um, at a point where people actually buy it. And my parsley's been out there for about uh, five days and it's still all there. But I'm surprised how long it has actually lasted. It hasn't wilted at all. I've put it in water and it's doing just fine. But I've also decided to give a bit more instead of try and take people's money. So I've lowered the prices of the parsley and I've given away free flowers. If no one takes the flowers, then something's up. Might be the fact that there's only about five people who live in this area. We'll see how it goes. I'm definitely not a businessman. Well, it's been another beautiful hot summer's day. I'm going to check on my honesty box and see if anyone's taken anything. Well, it turns out if you give stuff away for free, people will take it. And if you sell stuff, they don't. I need to rub that out and make that free as well. Alex's free honesty box. You don't need to be honest. You just take it and you don't even feel guilty because it's free. I am not really learning anything about uh, business or retail or selling stuff. It's fun though. It's good to know that someone out there has got some of my flowers on their table at home. Anyway, good night. <laughs> Another beautiful, hot, sunny, sunny day. The past couple of months have been so dry. We've even had a hose pipe ban in place. So I've been really hoping for some rain. Luckily, on the 20th of June, we got exactly that. Well, that rain is brilliant. I was just about to go outside and water the garden, but I don't have to. The rain has done it for me. Gonna need me welly boots. Looks like it's rained more than I thought it did. Look at that down there, it's completely flooded. I think it's too deep to walk through there. Well, it's amazing for the garden and all the plants and trees and everything because we haven't had much rain at all. We've got baby house sparrows up there in the bird box. And the garden is looking very wet. It's the 21st of June, midsummer, longest 
day of the year. From now on, it all gets worse. Today, I'm gonna be looking at my carrots. Carrots are a great thing to eat. They're sweet, they're orange, unless you get the purple ones. And I've been waiting a long time for these. Uh, I can't remember exactly how long they've been in the ground. I'll put it in text on the screen. They've been in the ground this long. I sowed them exactly where they have grown. I'm going to pick this row here. I've got three rows. This variety is called Nantes 5. I think it's quite a popular variety of carrots and I really want to cook some carrots this week. So we're going to see what we've got. Oh, look, it's been nibbled by something. It's like a lucky dip. What's it going to be? Oh, that's a proper carrot. That's a nice, oh, I can smell it. It's so strong smelly. And that is going straight in my basket. This is a fun game, pulling up carrots. Oh, that one is another stunning carrot. How about that for a carrot harvest? Some are looking really good. Some did some weird stuff and others got eaten a bit. And some are really small, but I'm happy with that. That is one row of carrots harvested. I've been told the best thing to do is twist off the top because then the carrot doesn't lose moisture through the leaves. Just harvested another strawberry. This one is perfectly ripe. Whoa, juicy. Every day I put flowers out, they all get taken. I guess because they're free and they look really nice. Parsley, however, I've sold one bunch. So I got one pound in there the other day. But the flowers are definitely a big hit with the neighbors. <laughs> Update from the cucumber jungle. Got some more cucumbers to harvest. One. Sometimes the fruits do this. You can see it is starting to form, but it's gone yellow. It doesn't look very good. It is the last day of June, and I'm doing some harvesting of cucumbers. The melons haven't grown much yet, but I'm hoping they produce some fruits soon. I mean, they've grown big. Their leaves and their foliage has grown a lot, but I reckon if it rained, I wouldn't get wet because this leaf is so big above my head. I just lifted the netting up to collect some more strawberries this morning. Every day there's a couple more ripe ones. Those containers have turned out really good. This sugar snap pea plant has been giving me so many peas recently. Every day there's peas to collect. But the leaves, the older leaves are starting to go a bit yellow. So I think it's nearing the end of its life. And there's not as many flowers being produced. So there's going to be less peas. I can collect some though. These are going to be for dinner. Here's one that I have left on the plant for ages. <laughs> Look at these peas inside. They're huge. But they are the biggest peas. Dad, check out these peas. Might collect some borage as well. That is a garnish on a plate of food. It looks beautiful. Sorry bees, I'm stealing your flowers. Let's do some cooking. I've been waiting for this day to come around for quite a while and I'm pleased to say that today Tonight, I'm going to cook up a meal for my family, which is going to be almost 100% with ingredients that I have grown or caught myself. I have a plate of sea bass that I caught from the ocean just the other day. I went out on my inflatable boat and did some fishing with a friend and we caught those fish. I wanted to check up on my potato plants to see if there were any tubers being produced under the ground. So I pulled up a couple of plants to see what I got. The first plant I pulled up was a little disappointing. There were, uh, I think there was one potato in, underground there. But I pulled up another one and also I emptied the container that I had outside the house on the patio uh, because the leaves were starting to go yellow. It didn't look very good. So I thought I'd tip them out. And we've got quite a few potatoes. There's probably, there's at least a kilogram in there. So I'm gonna make a potato salad 
with these. And then I've got a bowl full of sugar snap peas. I'm gonna cut up the cucumber and just eat that raw, maybe with some salt and pepper. And then I've got a few other ingredients from the pantry which I will add to the fish and to the potatoes to hopefully make them all taste nice. Someone told me that if you put ginger on bass, it gets rid of the fishy flavor. Mm -hmm. I love that fish. I feel very self-sufficient. I reckon if there was an apocalypse, I would be able to survive. Welcome back to the garden. My name's Alex and for the past year I've been growing vegetables in this patch over here and it's been really fun. However, I'm sad to say that this is going to be the last video I film in this garden. That's because I'm in the process of moving house to another part of England, which is very exciting. Anyway, in this video, I want to share with you some of the amazing harvests that I've been having over the past few months, including the best tomatoes I've ever eaten and also fresh sweet corn. It was my first year growing sweet corn and it was just so delicious. Anyway, sit back and enjoy watching me do some gardening. Oh no, that's not going to happen. Am I too strong? Probably. Oopsie. Carrot. Oh no. A lot of my spring onions, the crop is ruined. I think it's called onion white rot or onion white root rot where the roots just rot away and these have all gone white and mouldy. I've lost most of my second crop of spring onions. However, I have got a couple which are good. They're smaller but they're, at least they're not mouldy. And then this one I left in the ground for a long time. This is the same variety as this white lisbon is the name but this one i've just left a lot longer and it hasn't got attacked with any by anything it's nice and big onions it's really windy outside but it's nice and calm in the greenhouse and my melons are actually doing something i've got some watermelons and some normal melons uh, these ones here are, look at that, that is the size of a large tennis ball. Maybe it's a bit bigger than a tennis ball. And they're getting quite heavy. There's this one and then there's another one up here and another couple which are currently forming. And I'm worried that they're going to be too heavy and they're going to pull the pin out of the roof where I've got it attached to the string. But I'm going to wait and see how it goes. I might have to make some kind of support so there's not so much weight pulling them down. But with these container plants, I've actually been feeding them with a tomato food. It's high in potassium. And I believe when plants produce fruit, they need a lot of potassium to go into the fruit building. So I've been feeding all of these plants with that. The, the garden plants don't need as much because they can dig their roots as far as they want. But the plants in here, they've only got limited space. But I'm really excited about these. I think they take a while to ripen and grow to full maturity. So I think it might still be a month or two before we get any melons. And really it's just a waiting game to see how many of these fruits develop and become edible. All fed and watered. Out in the garden, the sweet corn had started flowering. The male flower on top carries the pollen and when the wind blows, it falls down onto the female flower below, which will eventually turn into the sweet corn. The tomatoes had reached the height of the bamboo sticks, so I cut the tops off to stop the plant from growing up and put its energy into the developing fruits. 
I had a look to see how the parsnips were developing and although I could eat them now, I think they still have got some time to expand so I picked some and left some for later. The onions that I planted as little bulbs back in March were also now ready. I've heard a good sign to look for is the stem falling over. This means the bulb has finished expanding. These onions would need to be stored, so I put them through a curing process, which involves drying out the stems and the outside layers of the onions. I laid them inside the greenhouse where it would be warm and dry. The drying of the bulbs takes a few weeks. It's the 26th of July. Uh, the past week or so I haven't been able to do much work in the garden because I've been busy harvesting the honey from the bees. It has been a very, very successful honey harvest. That's nearly 70 kilograms of honey. We're gonna be rich! I've come into the greenhouse because it's really windy outside and my little microphone on this camera doesn't deal with the wind very well. But in here, it's a bit sad. I've had to take down all of the vining melons and lay them down on these benches because they were getting too heavy. The weight of the melons was snapping the pins that were holding the string to the ceiling. And one day, I think it was last week or the week before, I came into the greenhouse and found one of my melons on the floor. No! 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 That fruit has disconnected from the main plant. So that, that's not gonna ripen. The time it took, that is so sad. Luckily I've still got one on this plant. I just hope it doesn't fall as well. I was very sad to lose one of my melons, but luckily we've still got a few others and I think they're still gonna take a bit of time yet though. In here, I've got the onions drying still. As you can see, you can hear them, they're getting drier. And I'm a little bit worried because I've had a very bad case of onion white rot. Now I believe this disease is in the soil and it's quite hard to get rid of. But some of the onions, like this one, can you see that white stuff there? On this plant it hasn't completely destroyed it, but on some of them, the plants are just gone. Like they were not even harvestable. I harvested some more of my potatoes. Potatoes. Yeehaw. My main crop potatoes have still got a little bit of time in the ground yet, but I'm excited to see how they do. I haven't had any time to pick any of the sweet peas over the past week, which I think is a good thing because the plants look amazing. They're just covered in these beautiful little flowers and I think they look quite good. Back in the spring, I planted a number of different varieties of strawberry plants because with strawberries, you've got early summer fruiting strawberries, you've got midsummer and then late summer fruiting strawberries. And then you've got some which are I think called perpetual, which fruit kind of at a mix of times throughout the season. I had completely forgotten what varieties of strawberries I had planted and I thought my strawberry harvest was kind of done for this year. But then one of my strawberry towers on the patio started flowering loads. So there's going to be another decent harvest of strawberries soon. And I think that variety is called Ostara, Ostara or something like that. And that is a late summer fruiting strawberry. So I, had, I didn't think I would get any more strawberries. So that's cool. I think it was about 10 days ago, my tomatoes were turning from green color to ready orange color. Today is the first day of my tomatoes turning red. Look at it. All those others are green and that one is starting to go red. I wonder how long it's gonna take for all of them to ripen. It was quite surprising actually how quick they transition from being unripe to ripe. And I've actually just picked one. This one is actually an orangey color. The variety is sun gold. Quite a few gardeners recommend sun gold variety. Um, this is the first time I've tried growing it, but I'm gonna try it. And then I've got a tomato here, which is actually from the supermarket, because I wanted to do a little side-by-side -side taste test. Because everyone says our homegrown food tastes better, but I find it hard to sort of know whether it does without eating it exactly side-by-side. -side. It probably does. But the thing is, it's not exactly a fair test because these tomatoes are different varieties. So they, they're meant to taste different. They're meant to be different things. Anyway, supermarket tomato. It's pretty good. Yeah, I like that. 
That's hard to beat. Now for the sun gold. Oh, okay. They're both good. I would eat both of them very happily. However, the one from the garden, definitely I can taste a way stronger flavour and definitely sweeter as well. I'm not a massive fan of tomatoes. I don't really eat raw tomatoes much. But over the course of this summer, I have found a couple of dishes which I really like to make. Mozzarella tomatoes and basil with some olive oil and salt on top is amazing. So I'm really looking forward to picking a whole bunch of those once they ripen and then making that. In fact, with all the things that I've planted in the garden, it all starts being inspired by something that I like to cook. For example, onions was a very obvious one for me because I'm always using onions in the kitchen. I thought, well, it would make sense to grow something which I'm cooking with all the time. Spring onions, uh, I grew because I love cooking Asian food and they are always so great to add to those sorts of dishes. When I planted my potatoes, the thing I had in my mind, the thing that was making me plant them was the idea and the thought of cooking roast potatoes, crispy roast potatoes with a roast dinner. And one of the things I've learned over the past couple of years of gardening is that you should always plant what you really like eating. Because if you plant loads of stuff which you're not too keen on, then there's not much incentive, there's not much uh, reason to look after it and really try your best to get a good harvest. But if you've got a dish in mind or a, or a certain thing that you love eating, if that's in your mind whilst you're looking after this plant, it helps keep on and it helps not giving up with the whole thing when things are maybe not going well, like slugs attacking your plants or diseases eating up to your onions. So yeah, the July update in the garden, things are looking good. Everything's sort of looking really mature. Lots of flowers are still out. My tallest sunflower finally has bloomed. Sunflowers are amazing. I definitely want to always plant them sunflowers. When they open up, the size of them is really impressive actually. And the bumblebees are always on them. In fact, I saw some bumblebees on the sunflower which were just sleeping. They looked like they'd just eaten loads of nectar and then they got tired, so they just fell asleep on the flower. Anyway, that's how the garden is looking on the 26th of July. I'll see you in August. I put these corn plants in the ground back in May, so it's taken about three months for them to get to this stage. They have been a really enjoyable plant to watch grow because they obviously get very tall. They have an interesting flowering system where they release the their male flower pollen from the top and it falls down onto the female flower underneath and it creates this, well, we're about to see what it created. I was reading this morning about how you tell when a corn plant, uh, a corn cob is ready to pick and apparently you look at the hairs on the female flower. And a sign that they are ready to pick is that they go this brown color. And also, if you peel back the sort of coating of the cob, you can see the little uh, grains of corn. This is my first ever corn harvest. I think you're gonna snap it off. Like that. <laughs> hey, I feel like a proper farmer now. We got our cob of corn. It was incredibly satisfying to snap off the plant. Oh wow, look at that. Beautiful. Apparently each one of these hairs needs to be pollinated, otherwise you'll have missing grains. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I heard somewhere. So you actually need to have really good pollination, which is why you plant a group of them together so that the pollen can fall down over all the, all the corn plants and help pollinate. That is our first corn cob harvested ever. This plant actually produced another one here. Oh wow, we got two corn cobs from one plant. This one's a little bit smaller. That's going to be dinner. Fresh corn from the garden. I never thought I'd ever grow corn. I see it in the fields around the house growing each year but I never thought I would grow it myself. I'm gonna have a look inside and peel it back. I hope I've 
picked it at the right time. There's a sweet corn. Smells great. Now I would love to barbecue it, but at the same time, I feel like I should probably just boil it so I get to taste the full flavor. I'll think about it and do some cooking tonight. Well, hey. Each day there's another tomato ripening. They start ripening closest to the stem and then they slowly ripen outwards. But I'm normally just picking off the ones that are ripe or just about ripe. Look at those, those are called sun gold. And you can see why, because they're beautiful golden orange and they taste incredible. I have another variety called Apiro, which are these red ones. Another cherry tomato and they're also really good. Not bad, beginning of August harvest, tomatoes and corn. Oh yeah. At this time of year, whilst the garden is looking pretty good and everything's growing lots, I enjoy just walking around the garden with a little basket or container and thinking about what to make for dinner. Obviously I just picked the corn and some tomatoes, but I'm also thinking about some other stuff. Something which I've been cooking so much of this year is crispy kale. Kale is kind of something which I never really have eaten in my life much. I always just think of it as a not very tasty green, but I realized if you roast it, it tastes incredible. These kale plants have grown really well and I just snapped the stems off. There hasn't been much damage actually from the cabbage butterfly larvae. There has been some eggs, but I've been able to remove most of them. And you just snap the lower leaves off. And you just roast them. And it takes about six, seven minutes and they go crispy with some salt, a bit of sugar, some MSG, they taste so good. Maybe we take this one as well. And walking around the garden is like walking around a supermarket or a farmer's market. You can be quite creative and you can take your time whilst you think about what things you could make for dinner. I know that with my corn, I'm gonna want some butter to like drizzle over the top once it's boiled. And then within the butter, I want to add something Maybe some chives or something garlicky. So I do have some chives over here. The chive plants aren't actually looking too great right now, but I'm sure there's enough in there. I'll chop that up and put it in with the butter. It's also great having a selection of edible flowers because something I have found that I quite enjoy is like decorating the plate, making it look nice. Uh, and that doesn't really affect the taste much, but it's, it's quite a fun thing to do if you're cooking in the kitchen to finish it off with some nice looking flowers. So I've got marigolds here, which I've been sprinkling on like salads and stuff, and it looks really nice. Definitely adds something to the dish. Of course, it doesn't add much taste, but I think it does look, does look really nice. Sunflower petals. That will actually go with the colour of the corn so well. I'm going to take some basil to go with the tomatoes. Just pinch out all the tops. I'm going to go for it and harvest some of my parsnips. I know that I could leave them longer and they'd get bigger, but I really want to eat them as well. What have we got? Oh wow, parsnip. Well, I don't think we're having parsnips for Christmas now. I just went a bit crazy, devoured half my row of parsnips. But I needed something for my meal tonight. It was either parsnips or potatoes. And I had loads of potatoes the other day, so I wanted to have something different. I reckon that's enough for three people. Okay, a little bit of parsley, seeing as I have so much of it. I don't know why this parsley hasn't gone to flower yet. I thought this one was because the leaves were changing. Like that's a parsley leaf. They've gone all funny and I thought it was a sign they would flower soon, but they just haven't. Parsley. 
Well, my fig tree lost its only fig. It had one fig that it grew this spring and then it dropped off and then died. Um, but the tree has now produced lots of smaller figs, which I'm not sure if they're going to actually ripen this year because I don't think we've got long enough in the season left. I have a feeling they might just get to winter and then die again because it gets cold. I think they need to produce the figs at the right time of year for them to actually ripen throughout the season. Unless they were obviously in a heated greenhouse. We're going to have to wait and see. But there are lots of little figs on the tree right now. Whether they actually produce us fruit, I don't know. One thing I've learned over the past year doing lots of cooking is it's really good if you're trying to cook lots of different things to do preparation before you cook. So cutting up everything beforehand and preparing it all before you start cooking stuff on the stove. Otherwise it can be just so hectic in the kitchen. So I've got a bowl for putting compost in, a bowl and a plate for putting the prepared vegetables on, and I'm gonna start chopping up stuff. Tomatoes. That one we've got loads of leaves and some flowers. And then we've got what is really the highlight, and that is my corn that I've been trying to grow all year. I really hope it tastes good. Now for the exciting bit. It's actually quite a special moment for me. It's actually quite satisfying pulling off these outer leaves. Oh, look at that. Oh, I just remembered I got all these parsnips to prepare as well. Look at those crunchy corns. What have we got here? We got corn from the garden cooked two ways, deep fried and just boiled. I've got a little pot of chive melted butter. Then we have some roasted parsnips and carrots from the garden. And that is a wasp. And a salad with my tomatoes from the garden and also some cheese, some halloumi cheese which has been fried in a pan. Oh yeah, and some crispy kale. Oh, so good. Let's eat this. Most of this is from the garden. Mm. I'm very happy about that. Very happy. You happy, Dad? I'm happy. <laughs> this is the potato bed, which is in a circle around this birch tree. It wasn't the best idea because trees like that take up a lot of water from the soil. So these plants, these potatoes that I planted around it, didn't exactly have the best of lives. They didn't have much water this year. I've dug up half of the potatoes. So I had one variety on that side. They were Charlotte's and they were incredibly tasty and amazing, but there just wasn't that many and they weren't that big. And um, I think that might have been to do with the water. And also this side here, I've got, I think these are Maris Pipers and they grew, as you can see, they grew, grew all right, but they just don't look very strong. They don't look very healthy. The green on the leaves is sort of this paley green. So I don't know how the potatoes are gonna look. But I'm gonna dig some up today because I need some for dinner. And those were the biggest ones from that plant. They're just not that impressive. And they actually have this sort of brown mark on them, which is I think potato scab. And that happens when the soil is too dry. Now these plants are still alive. They, they could keep growing and the tubers could could grow but I checked about three weeks ago and the potatoes were about the same size so they just haven't done much 
in the last few weeks. They're still edible, you can still eat them. Just not, not ideal. Oh, okay. That's slightly better. Look at those ones. Oh, that's the biggest one. They're actually getting better. There's a few good size ones there. They all do have the potato scab on though. Because these potatoes didn't get much water at all during June and July when it was really hot and we had the hose pipe ban. I'm going to dig up one more plant. So from each plant there's roughly 8 to 10 potatoes. Most of them though were this size. Occasionally we get one this size. Bucket of potatoes. And homegrown potatoes are so good. Probably gonna roast these. Roast potatoes are my favorite. So as you can see now that I've washed them, the marks are so obvious. That is all potato scab. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that's because they were too dry. If I was a farmer and all my potatoes looked like this, they wouldn't really be able to be sold to the supermarkets, I don't think. I'm sure they'll taste good underneath that rough looking skin. Anyway, let's see how much we got. Whoa, pretty much three kilograms there. Nice. It's the 11th of um, August. And I've just walked into the garden to find loads of my tomatoes all over the floor. I think there's a fox or a dog which keeps running through the garden. Luckily, we've still got lots on the plants, but there's a fair few on the floor. This disaster got me a bit worried and it's made me uh, want to harvest some before another animal comes through and ruins the rest. I think tomatoes ripen even off the plant, so even some of the unripened ones should ripen up nicely once they're indoors. And they actually break off the plant really easily. And there's some trusses which are just, it's got so many nice ripe fruits on. Now some of the tomatoes have splits in them. See that? Apparently that happens when you have no rain for a while, then you get a load of rain, and the fruit expands quicker than the skin of the tomato, meaning it splits the skin. They are wonderful. I never used to like tomatoes either, but this year, these cherry tomatoes actually taste amazing. That's a good harvest. A full bowl of cherry tomatoes. And I actually went fishing in the sea last night, so I got some mackerel that I filleted this morning. So we're gonna cook up the mackerel maybe and some butter and lemon and garlic, and then do a, uh, maybe a tomato, basil and mozzarella salad. That sounds good. Oh yeah. It's so good being able to just walk in the garden, find whatever is right, pick it, and then decide on what you're gonna eat for dinner according to what you find in the garden. It's amazing, I love it. Dinner's ready. Oh, 
I walked into the greenhouse this morning and I could smell melons. And you might say, well, of course you're gonna smell melons. You're growing melons in here. But over the past few months, I haven't smelled melons. It was only today. And I read in my melon growing book that the best way to tell if your melon is ripe is by the smell. And if I go and grab a melon and smell it, my goodness, it, it smells so strong of melon. And that's a sign that they're ready to pick. Watermelon, however, doesn't have the strong smell, but I think this is ready because everything's dying back. It might be that it got some sort of disease, but it looks like it's just, yeah, it looks like maybe a, oh gosh. It doesn't look very good, actually. I'll take it off. There we go. First melon picked. I don't know if this one is going to be ripe because it might have died before it even uh, managed to ripen. So we've got these two watermelons. I think another way to tell that a melon is ripe is that the tendril closest to the melon begins to go brown and curls up, which has happened to these ones. So we're gonna pick them. Here goes. Oh, didn't even need to cut it. Honestly, it smells so good. Like, that's definitely ripe. I was thinking about going in the kitchen to do the taste test, but I might as well do it here. I'm gonna do it where the melon has spent its whole life. Now these melons, I don't think had the best of lives. I think having a small pot uh, just means you're a bit restricted and the plant can't thrive as much as it would if it was in the ground with more space But uh, I'm still really happy about this because this is the first time I've ever grown a melon. Should we cut it open? Oh, it feels, oh it's so watery. Might be overripe, you know? Might be overripe. Whoa! That's ripe. Smells gorgeous. Alex's melon of 2023. What can I say? It's a melon. Mm. Such a nice, smooth flavor. Like it's not, it's not sour at all. It's just a nice sweetness. And it's not even too sweet. It's, a mellow sweetness. This melon variety is Chorente, which I think is a French name, I'm not too sure. And I'm glad I grew melons this year in this greenhouse because they need warmth and they need nice and hot weather, uh, which I won't have where I'm moving to. I'm not gonna have a greenhouse, so I'm glad I did it this year. And maybe one day in the future, I'll have a greenhouse, so I'll be able to do it again. I'm gonna have the rest of this later. Melons! What's the watermelon gonna be like? Well, as you can see, it didn't get a chance to fully ripen. It's got, it started to go red, so it started to ripen. There's a little bit of sweetness there, but not much. I don't know what happened to that. Melon must have got uh, attacked by some sort of fungus or something. Anyway, that's Alex's melon story of 2023. I grew a bowl of melon. Yeah, it's been a good summer harvesting melons from the garden. Cool. I never thought I'd ever do that. I realized this year that having a space outside but still undercover is very helpful, not only for growing things like melons and cucumbers, which need warm temperatures, but also for just storing things in. I've got loads of these, and uh, I put these in the greenhouse, it feels like maybe three, four weeks ago. I can't remember exactly when, but it's taken a while, but they are now ready for storage. You see how dry this stem is? There's no water in there anymore, which means the onion will store a lot better. And today I'm going to gather up all these onions. I've got two different varieties, Stirlon over there, and uh, some Stuttgarter Giants. I'm going to attempt to 
uh, tie them up with string so that I can then hang them from like the roof of the kitchen. Anyway, first thing I need to do is cut most of the roots off, just tidy it up a bit. And also cut the stem, leaving about three, four inches. You see that, it's completely dry in there. I'm gonna do that to all the onions, and then I'm going to try and do some tying, tying up with string. Last year, my mum and dad asked me, what do you want for your birthday? And I said to them, I would really like a bucket, like a tin or metal bucket. And uh, this is what they gave to me. Look at that. And it has been the best present I think I've ever had because it's so handy for so many different things. What am I trying to say? Buckets are underrated, especially light metal ones like this. They're very nice things to hold and use. I think we should appreciate buckets a bit more. Got a string. I really don't know how I'm supposed to do this. I hang the string up from here, maybe. Yeah, that works. And then somehow we've got to attach all these onions. Next one, through. And there we go. I'm going to do this with the rest of them. Or maybe I'll try plathing some of them. That might be trickier, but I think it will look better and neater. Right, let's try this one more time before I go absolutely mad. I don't know why I'm incapable of this. It's just tricky. So we've got three and we need them to cross over. I don't know how to do this. It's been a really frustrating morning trying to learn how to plait onions. I still don't quite know if I've done it correctly, but it looks okay. I will show you my results. There's a couple. Looks pretty cool. And these I'm gonna hang from the kitchen. So when we wanna use an onion, just snip one off and then cook it. And there you go, onions. You can live there next to Hugh Furley Whittingstall. And it's just perfect location, right next to the, the cooking area. Just take an onion, put it in the pan, do some cooking. Oh, it's so awesome. Next year I wanna have hundreds more so they can just be covering the ceiling. I learned this year that you benefit from a vegetable garden in many ways. It's not just the healthy fresh food, but having a garden also creates a nice place to relax. And I've enjoyed many evenings this summer, just sat in the garden or walking around, doing pretty much nothing. But it's, uh, it's a nice place to spend time. The light this evening is mad. There's a rainbow. And the sky is so dark. But then there's light on the trees. It's coming to the end of my time living in this house with my parents. I'm moving out. And the garden, once all that is harvested, my dad will turn it back into... I don't know, whatever he wants, probably lots of flowers and shrubs. But hopefully where I move house to, I'll be able to still continue doing some gardening. You may have noticed I have a new jumper. I found it in a shop the other day, so I bought it because people have been saying I need to get a new jumper. And also, it's getting into autumn and I need a hood to keep me warm. So was this gardening veg growing project worth it this year? Did I save money by growing my own food? Did I find it enjoyable? We're gonna talk about all that right now. I made a note on my phone of all the expenses and also all the harvests I've done. So this year I spent about 200 pounds on the gardening project. I was very lucky to already have uh, a place to grow some vegetables. Also, I'm very lucky in that my dad is a gardener, so he had all the tools that I would need for the project. So I didn't have to spend any money on those things. However, I did spend uh, most of that money, or oh, well, 84 pounds of that 200 on compost, which is the main source of 
I guess, food for the garden. It seems like compost is the biggest input into gardening. Also included in that amount of money that I spent was seeds. I bought a lot of seeds for this year and also module trays to sow the seeds into before they went in the garden. These were two costs which I actually can use again in the future. Well, the seeds that I planted I can't use, but in the seed packets are many more seeds that I didn't use, so I can uh, use them all next year. Uh, and the module trays that I sowed all the seeds in, they can be used for many years to come, so that's a good investment. So we put about 200 pounds into this project, and in return, we got nine cucumbers, about 50 strawberries, and counting, still got a few more to pick. 12 bunches of spring onions, one kilogram of sugar snap peas, 10 large bunches of coriander, 20 bunches of parsley, lettuce and chard. I had a consistent supply of these leafy crops in the spring. Carrots, we had a couple of different harvests. I think we got about a kilogram total. It wasn't amazing. Out of the 100 onions that I put into the ground in the spring, we got 85 full-sized bulbs that we can eat. Four kilograms of Charlotte potatoes, five kilograms of Maris Piper potatoes, 13 corn cobs, about a kilogram and a half of tomatoes. It might actually be more than that because I just harvested another probably like 800 grams. So let's say two, two kilograms of tomatoes and three melons. I looked at the list of things I'd grown and went online and looked at what it would have cost me to buy this amount of food. I looked for organically grown uh, produce and we harvested about 212 pounds worth uh, of, of food. 212 pounds worth of food and I spent 200 pounds on the project. That's 12 pounds profit. We grew enough food to actually save money. How cool is that? Well, not quite as amazing as it might seem because I spent every single morning for the whole of June and July when we had really hot, dry weather, watering the garden. I would spend maybe half an hour to an hour every morning. There's a whole load of work that goes into this. You have to do every single step of the way. Uh, normally, we're used to just kind of, yeah, but going to the shop and then buying our vegetables and they are just perfect, ready to just put in the oven or in the pan. You don't have to do any preparation. But when you grow stuff yourself, you have to learn how to do all the different steps that it takes. And it makes you really appreciate all the things that you've grown and you don't want any of it to go to waste, which I think is a great thing. I've learned so much about how plants grow and that in itself makes it all feel kind of worthwhile. Anyway, to conclude, Yes, gardening is great. I would definitely suggest uh, if you've got space to do it, grow something. It's incredibly rewarding and it feels great watching something grow from a seed all the way to an adult plant where you can harvest it and eat it. Thanks for watching this garden video and this garden series this year. I hope you have learned something along the way and maybe it has inspired you to grow something uh, for yourself too. My plan now is to move house because I am actually now living in Bristol. Well, I'm not living right now, but I kind of have somewhere that I'm renting in Bristol and I need to move there. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to get an allotment. So stay tuned for the up and coming garden videos where we will have a new space to work with, where we're gonna try and grow a load more food. Thanks for watching everyone. See you soon. <laughs>